My name is Paul Riley from the scientific marketing team at Diagnostic Astago, and we have the science, Astago Scientific short series that we are continuing here today regarding lupus anticoagulant testing and the role of the different tests within the lupus anticoagulant testing panel. So on our last edition, we discussed the activated partial thromboplastin time or the APTT assay, and we discussed the role of the different phospholipid mixtures in that assay. So in this edition of the Stago Scientific Shorts, we are going to zero in on the role of the low and high phospholipids here with our special guest, Claudia. Please introduce yourself, Claudia. Hi, Paul. Thanks for having me. My name is Claudia Escobar, and I am the lead applications and new technologies trainer here at Diagnostic Stago, but I am a laboratory, and I've worked mm -hmm. in special coag for many, many years, in addition to my time at Stago, and have run across a lupus anticoagulant test or two in my lifetime. See. So we talked a lot about APTT testing on our last edition, uh, could you, but we talked about yeah, the role of phospholipids, and especially the role of doing two diff or different tests that have low or high phospholipid mixtures. Could you talk about why those low and high phospholipid mixtures are important? Yeah, of course. And again, it goes back to the kind of antibody that we're talking about. When we talk about lupus anticoagulant, it is an antibody directed at phospholipids. Again, the APTT test is really mainly mm -hmm. used to screen for intrinsic factor issues or defects detecting circulating inhibitors like a lupus anticoagulant and and in an um, sort of roundabout way to monitor heparin. Those right. circulating anticoagulants, which, as I mentioned, include lupus anticoagulant, and as a phospholipid antibody, they latch themselves on to the phospholipid that is in a PTT-based reagent. If mm -hmm. you've heard the previous session, um, I used the analogy of musical chairs. So right. the less phospholipid that there is in a reagent, the more impact the antibody is going to have on an APTT result because it really sort of knocks out all of the phospholipid in the reagent and therefore really emphasizing the prolongation of a lupus anticoagulant test, in this case, a PTT or any other lupus related reagent that is um, phospholipid based. And, okay. you know, you also that will then demonstrate the prolongation based on the strength of the antibody. I see. I see. OK, so what about the place of mixing studies in the LA screening and diagnostic pathway and which reagents would we use in a mixing study setup? So, I mean, mixing studies become an incredibly powerful tool when it comes to lupus anticoagulant testing because it just gives the laboratory more information. So we know the patient comes in with a prolonged APTT and because again, an APTT is a global assay and it is used for multiple things, we need to start ruling out or eliminating what that prolongation may be due to. So a mixing study becomes, as I said, an incredibly powerful tool that provides a lot of information for the laboratory. So if I mix, my, if I have, first of all, a prolonged APTT with a patient, or another screening assay for lupus anticoagulant. And then I perform the mixing study using that same method um, mm -hmm. of testing. If that prolongation stops and the patient result corrects into what is considered normal, then mm -hmm. we can eliminate the fact that it may be a lupus anticoagulant and it could potentially be a factor deficiency. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, that mixing study, if it still shows prolongation, then it definitely is going to lead us down the path of a lupus anticoagulant. So it's really powerful. Instead of the laboratory doing just a an extensive prolonged APTT panel, including lupus and factors and maybe a heparin assay, it can really help narrow them down as to what tests they need to focus on. Ooh, okay. Uh, then what about the role of different types of methods for doing mixing studies? Like we talked about APTT, but what about other tests like the dilute Russell Viper venom time? Absolutely. So really any test that's involved in lupus in a lupus anticoagulant panel, it's best to be treated exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. So you start with a screening step, 
Those are typically always low phospholipid reagents because you really want to see the impact of that antibody on the reaction or the clotting time. Then mm -hmm. the mixing study can come in and then help correct or uh, continue or still display that prolongation of that screening reagent to really lead the mm -hmm. laboratory down that path. So here now what we're looking at, just like we did with the APTT, as far as the DRVV is concerned, a screening step, which is a low reagent, low phospholipid mm -hmm. concentration reagent. Then with your confirmatory, again, going back to that musical chairs analogy, mm -hmm. a high phospholipid reagent, all of those phospholipids floating around, overwhelming that reagent, that particular anticoagulant. And so the mixing mm -hmm. study becomes really important for any test that is included in a lupus anticoagulant profile. I see. Okay. And then uh, what about the confirmatory APTT based assays like such as state cloud LA? Uh, how do you go about validating that from the laboratory side when you're trying to implement the test or at a lot change? So, of course, with that kind of testing, you have it's a multi step process, the method verification. And this applies either to lupus anticoagulant or any really any other coagulation assay that you're validating in the in the mm -hmm. lab. So you have for some precision testing to make sure that there is reproducibility in results. Mm -hmm. You'll have reference ranges that are established based on your normal normal population. And then lastly, some comparison testing. You need to make sure that the results that you are producing in your laboratory compare to a laboratory running the similar or same protocol or reagents that you are in your own laboratory. And the same thing applies for a lot conversion. You know, we hope that from lot to lot, we have the same performance in reagents, but there's always sometimes that um, some variations may occur. And so in those variations, what we want to ensure is one, am I still reporting out the same results from one lot to the next? And if I'm not, or if there's a slight difference, do I need to reestablish a reference range or tweak it somehow with mm -hmm. some normal values that you can then um, reestablish or reset a reference range? Okay, great. And then that will allow the laboratory to yeah, use these tests on an ongoing basis for diagnosing these patients who potentially have then that antiphospholipid syndrome. Absolutely, <clears throat> yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. That's really interesting. Thank you for that. Uh, You're welcome.